see here the chart um, of silver during the triple top of 2008, 2009, uh, that led it to the spike to $50 in April, uh, or was it May, April 30th, I think it was like the very end of April, when silver just touched $50 over here, you can see. So before that, in the years, in the year and a half leading up to that, we got a triple top at 20. Um, could have been quadruple if you count this as two. Uh, do it however you want. This is not an exact science, even though it is. Trust the science. Um, <clears throat> now we have, we all know that silver has been touching and going with $30 uh, for some time now since 2020. Uh, so we're at four and a half years, uh, four years, something like that. Uh, so CPI during silver $30 triple top, where is the CPI in points now? It's at 313.548. And now we're going to do some math. In today's video, we delve into the intricate world of finance and economics with insights from Rafi Faber. Rafi's analysis sheds light on the current state of bank reserves, the Federal Reserve's actions, and the broader economic implications. From potential banking crises to the dynamics of the COMEX, and even a deep dive into Bitcoin and silver markets, we've got a comprehensive overview for you. So sit back, relax, and let's navigate the complex waters of today's financial landscape together. To begin, bank reserves this week have stabilized at approximately $337 trillion. Although there has been a slight increase over the past few weeks, it has not been significant. The critical threshold where another banking crisis could emerge is around the $3 trillion mark, which is just $370 billion away. Historically, this line was breached during the last monetary crisis in March 2023, and we are now slightly above that level. As we approach the summer, a seasonal decline in money supply is expected, which could exacerbate the situation. The Federal Reserve plans to slow down its quantitative tightening QT by June or August to prevent reserves from falling below the critical $3 trillion level. Despite their caution, it seems inevitable that this line will be crossed again. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet continues to shrink. Last week alone, it decreased by $49,136 billion, the most significant reduction since February 2024, potentially even December 2023. The balance sheet now stands at Dallas 73 trillion. The ongoing drain of the monetary base is making the banking system increasingly precarious. Eventually, this could lead to a significant financial disruption. The Fed is also grappling with weekly losses on its bond portfolio, resulting in operating losses that contribute to hyperinflation risks. These losses, currently totaling $168,899 billion, are backed by deferred assets essentially meaning they are unsupported by tangible assets. This situation mirrors the hyperinflation scenario in Argentina, where the central bank's issuance of currency against worthless IAS led to severe economic instability. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. First things first, bank reserves this week are stable at about $3.37 trillion. They've gone slightly up over the last two weeks but not much uh the red line here where we are going to hit another banking crisis is somewhere around the three trillion dollar mark so we're 370 billion dollars away from that there are going to be drains going through august as this is the seasonal time where money supply tends to decline into the summer uh when what the last time we hit a monetary crisis or a banking crisis was at this line in march 2023 it should be slightly above that, the red line, where the next price is going to hit. And this is why the Fed is planning to slow down quantitative tightening in uh, August or June or one of those months. I think June, actually, they're going to slow it down, but they're still going to do two QT, but at a slower pace because they don't want these bank reserves to fall below uh, wherever they were, around $3 trillion when the last banking crisis hit and they're trying to be careful but they're going to hit it anyway because you know that's what they do but meanwhile the balance sheet is still draining last week we drained another 49.136 billion dollars that is the most since uh, about february yeah since february it might be a little bit more than that so if it's more than february then it's the most since december 2023 
uh, the biggest drain since then. We're at $7.3 trillion that summer in early 2021. Uh, we're going to hit the crisis line. It just, we just don't know exactly when, but the monetary base is still draining, making it more and more precarious for the banking system, which will eventually hit a wall or a tsunami or whatever you want to describe, whatever it is they're going up against, which is not good. The Fed, meanwhile, is still losing money every week on its bond portfolio and operating loss. And this is the uh, back end of what ha causes hyperinflation. A central bank that loses money, they try to say that it doesn't matter and it doesn't affect monetary policy. Well, if it doesn't, well, then balance sheets don't matter and they can just like invent whatever money they want and just put it in the economy without backing with any asset, which is a bunch of crap. These losses will continue. We have now $168.899 billion that are losses that are backed by deferred assets, meaning nothing. And this, by the way, is what causes hyperinflation in Argentina because its central bank buys IOUs from the treasury, which are worth nothing on the market and issues currencies. So they are at a loss because those assets that they get from the parliament or the Argentinian government, this is before Mille, they aren't worth anything. And so the Argentinian central bank is at a severe loss, which is what causes hyperinflation on the back end. It takes a while to kick in and it's coming. Something interesting on the COMEX I noticed uh, today, this is Friday, May 17th, but these are numbers for Thursday, May 16th. Uh, so we have the June contract here, right? You have uh, open interest of 254,000. Uh, open interest yesterday was up 2,523 contracts. Why that is interesting is because the June contract goes to delivery in 10 business days. You usually don't see contracts increasing in open interest when they are that close to a delivery day. Usually uh, traders are buying the next active contract, contract, which in this case is August, but for some reason, a whole bunch of traders opened the June contract. They think there's gonna be a huge bump very soon and they'll be able to roll over or they'll be able to just sell the contract for a gain. Uh, or they're taking delivery in 10 days. Who knows? We'll see what happens. There's still a lot of open interest that needs to clear out before we get to delivery in 10 days time. It usually or almost always does or pretty much always does because the comic has never defaulted yet. But one day they will. I don't think it'll be this month, but it will be some month on an active contract. Uh, China is selling treasuries. The, the, the pace has accelerated to an all time high. Uh, we have here monthly increase or decrease in treasuries and agency securities. Treasuries are, of course, uh, the bonds that are issued by the federal government and agency debt is uh, our bonds issued by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, other government sponsored enterprises, AKA fascist institutions, where you have a union between corporatism and state, which leads to fascism. But let's not say that because uh, it's not nice. It also leads to, you know, economic crashes and such. And by the way, Freddie Mac is looking to buy second mortgages and hand out money so people can borrow against their houses and then lose their houses to the banks again. Uh, that'll be fun. Let's go through that again. Uh, we're gonna, a little bit about Bitcoin here. Um, Bitcoin to silver, Bitcoin did hit a new all time high in silver terms uh, around April, March or April. Right, it was like 2,800 and or 2,900 uh, ounces per Bitcoin, but it has fallen sharply since then. We're down to about 2,191 ounces. And uh, well, there's another chart here which shows you that in gold terms, in real money terms, uh, silver is real money, but it's not yet at the monetary ratio. So uh, if we count gold, Bitcoin in gold terms, the top really came in uh, the end of 2021. It hasn't really exceeded that top since. And uh, since coming close to testing that top at about 34 ounces per Bitcoin, the record was 37.5 ounces per Bitcoin, I think in October, or November, 2021. Since then, the price has dropped uh, steadily. We're down to 27 and a half ounces per Bitcoin is that the top is 2021, the all time high that will never be surpassed. I think so. And I promise I am never wrong. Shifting our focus to the COMEX, an interesting trend has emerged. On May 17, the June contract saw an increase in open interest by two 523 contracts, reaching a total of 284,000. This is unusual because contracts typically do not see such an increase so close to delivery, which is just 10 business days away. This could indicate that traders anticipate a significant price movement soon or plan to take delivery of the contracts. Historically, COMEX has always managed to clear open interest before delivery, avoiding defaults. However, the ongoing economic uncertainties could challenge this record. 
China's pace of selling US. Treasuries has accelerated to an all-time high. This sell-off includes both treasuries and agency securities, which are bonds issued by entities like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. These sales are indicative of broader economic shifts and could impact US financial stability. Additionally, institutions like Freddie Mac are buying second mortgages and extending more credit, potentially setting up a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis. Turning to Bitcoin, it reached a new all-time high in silver terms around March or April 2024, peaking at 2,900 ounces per Bitcoin. However, it has since fallen sharply to about 2,191 ounces. In gold terms, Bitcoin's peak was at the end of 2021, with a record of 37.5 ounces per Bitcoin. Since then, it has steadily declined, currently sitting at 27.5 ounces per Bitcoin. This analysis suggests that the all-time high from 2021 might not be surpassed, marking it as a potential peak in Bitcoin's valuation in terms of precious metals. This is where I wanted to get into the triple top uh, at silver, on silver at $30, why it makes so much sense. So the first part of this we went through last week, I'm going to add another prong to the fork. It's now a three pronged fork, like, you know, those forks that had three prongs on them. Sometimes you use them for spaghetti. Here we have 1978. I showed you last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, it was one of these weeks, that there was a triple top at $6.50 from 1974 to 1979. It could have been a quadruple top, depends exactly how you count it. Triple, quadruple, whatever. The CPI in 1978, when it hit 650 in November of 1978, before it broke through, was 67.4 points. That's the CPI measurement. And we all know that the CPI is 100% dead on accurate. And anyone who badmouths the CPI, well, he can just... Uh... I wanted to add here, uh, so we have 67.4 relative to a $6.50 top. And now in 2008, and I'll show you this chart in the next slide here, uh, the the um, CPI was at 218.178. You have to be very exact here because the CPI is an exact science. Trust the science, people. It's very trustworthy. So May 2010, the last time when silver hit a triple top or a quadruple top of $20 uh, chart on the next slide, you'll see the CPI was at 218.178. Now keep that in mind. See here the chart um, of silver during the triple top of 2008, 2009, uh, that led it to the spike to $50 in April, uh, or was it May, April 30th, I think it was like the very end of April, when silver just touched $50 over here, you can see. So before that, in the years, in the year and a half leading up to that, we had a triple top at 20. Um, could have been quadruple if you count this as two. Uh, do it however you want. This is not an exact science, even though it is. Trust the science. Um, <clears throat> now we have, we all know that silver has been touching and going with $30 uh, for some time now since 2020. Uh, so we're at four and a half years, uh, four years, something like that. Uh, so CPI during silver, tr $30 triple top. Where is the CPI in points now? It's at 313.548. And now we're going to do some math. Rafi introduces an intriguing concept regarding silver's price movements. Historically, silver has experienced triple or quadruple tops before significant price increases. For instance, from 1974 to 1979, silver had a triple top at $1.650, followed by a rapid rise to $1.50 by 1980. Similarly, in 2008, silver hit a triple top at $1.20 before surging to $1.50 by 2011. Currently, silver is flirting with a $1.30 top, paralleling past patterns. The consumer price index CPI ratios from these periods align closely, suggesting that silver could soon break through the $1.30 barrier and potentially surge much higher. Given the current economic environment, Rafi predicts that once silver breaches $1.50, it could quickly escalate to $250. Remember that first chart? We said that the CPI was at 67.4 at a $6.50 top. The ratio of CPI to the silver top at that time in 1978 is 10.4. And we reached $50 by 1980, about a, just, a, so it was November 1978 to 1980. It's about 13, 14 months uh, ahead. Uh, so 2010, the CPI was 218.178 divided by $20 top, triple top, quadruple top in silver. The ratio is 10.9, very similar to 10.4. $50 was hit by 2011 after the late 2010 
uh, a triple, quadruple top at 20. So not many months after that. And now 2024, we have a CPI of 313.548 divided by a $30 top. We have the ratio of 10.5. So 10.4, 10.9, 10.5. Does that mean we reach $50 by 2025? I think so. And I think this time we will go way beyond that because we're in end game territory here. Once we hit 50, we will keep going. And I think the move from 50 to like say 250 is going to be a lot quicker than the move uh, to break 30, which took four years and counting and it is going to break. The conclusion is the $30 triple, quadruple, whatever top makes all kinds of sense and it is going to break.